So I says to the guy, I says, if laughter is the best medicine, I'm a freaking dispensary. <laughs> Welcome to this week's episode of Plain English, the YouTube show where we inform you that it's time to improve your English language skills through humor and chew bubblegum. And we're all out of gum. I'm your host, Bud Newman. We're back, ladies and gentlemen, with a brand new space and the same old face. That's right, here it is, season two. Let's see if I remember how to do this. Last week, I asked you guys to wait. Last time, I asked you guys to wait. Last season, I asked you guys to tell me the last time you used guile, either in reality, in a sentence, or in Street Fighter. As far as I can tell, Super Fox 1080 did two out of three. I use guile a lot to make sure no one around me understands what I'm talking about. I used to hate being smart, and now I find it funny. XD. You know, I can't remember ever hating being smart. Well, of course not. I can't ever remember you being smart. You're not even supposed to be in this scene. Read the freaking script. Uh, Aloran and Aloran and Aloran Aloran's Alorness. Aloran NS says, I use guile all the time in my head. I don't actually do the things I think up. Good thinking. Adam of Neb says, I recently quoted the TV show Corner Gas. The quote contained the word guileful. Then I found five bucks. Ah, guileful. Full of guile. And with that five bucks, you could be full of gas. Huh, fill a gas tank with five dollars. Who said anything about a gas tank? I was talking about his stomach. Jeez, don't you people ever watch my strange addiction? Here at Plain English, we value your ability to be clever. So that's why we'll be spending the next few weeks looking at language concepts in humor. We'll talk about all sorts of funny English devices. From alliteration fun to sarcasm and puns. We've got it all, including the current cultural comedy currency, irony. Now wait just one freedom loving minute. Great. Another person who's not supposed to be here. Come on, man. I thought you was an American. We can't talking about no Irani or Iranian or any of that nonsense on these videos. No, Buford, I'm not talking about Iran, which for the record is pronounced Iran. I'm talking about irony, the rhetorical device. Yeah. Who's adorable vice? Miami vice? I love Don Johnson. He's the man. The Michael man. Wow, Buford, that was Edward James almost clever. Glad to oblige. See you later, Sonny. <laughs> What you've just witnessed was an example of a few kinds of humor, but we'll just talk about two today. The pun and the in-joke. The first pun was actually a pretty bad one, and it was illustrated by Buford mistaking the word irony for iran -y or something like that. I don't pretend to know how Buford's mind works. Anyway, the common pun takes two words that sound similar but have two totally different meanings, and it puts them against each other. Buford, the freedom-loving, change-hating, all-American redneck, comes across the word irony and instantly hears a word that he's been trained to fear and hate. Iran. Well, Iran, but even newscasters get that one wrong. Learn to pronounce words, CNN. Now, I don't claim to know my demographic all that well, but I'm gonna go out on a limb here and assume that not many of you are familiar with the hit 80s TV show, Miami Vice. So you probably didn't get all the awesome Miami Vice-related puns that I stuck in there. Because you wouldn't know that Michael Mann was the producer of Miami Vice, that Edward James Olmos, whose last name sounds like Almost, was on the show, or that Don Johnson, who Buford thinks is the man, the Michael Mann, played a character named Sonny. Get it now? It's not so funny when I explain it. Is it? This is what's called an in-joke. Someone who's not familiar with the reference material is most likely not going to get the joke. Which is why the joke is typically only a joke to the people who know that it's a joke. Joke. Joke, 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 joke. Yeah. Are we having a pun yet? Sorry, I had to. Today's vocabulary word is hubris. Hubris is a noun, which means it's a person, place, or thing, right? Uh, wrong. That explanation is simplistic and stupid. Whoa, calm down! See, technically you could call it a thing, but it's really more a concept or an idea. You would explain it that way. <laughs> Dude! Anyway, hubris is a word that's usually reserved for really obvious instances of pride and inappropriate levels of self-confidence. Hubris is basically just a fancy way of saying arrogance. Oh, sure. It's just a simple word of explaining the fact that you even have to explain this word to these people is just absurd. Okay, that's it. Knock it off. <laughs> I turned that jerk into stone because I'd had quite enough of his hubris. <laughs> So there you have it, folks, your week in plain English. The plain English audience is full of guile and full of gas. Wait, that came out wrong. Puns can be loads of fun. Just make sure to give it a rest if people aren't in on the joke. <laughs> Hubris, don't do it or you'll be turned into stone. If you enjoyed this video, you should hit the share button down below. And now is your time to respond. For today's discussion, what's your favorite pun? Mine is probably the joke, why were the snakes on a car windshield? Because they were vipers. Ah, 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 ah. So leave your favorite puns in the comment section below. I look forward to learning something from you and I hope you learned something from me. Thanks for watching. Boom.